simultaneously during the investigation. So, you want to find out everything there is to know about Diane? Agent York, Nick is leaving the bar. <laughs> Wait! She's still alive. Stop right there, Nick. You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Diane Ames. Emily, hurry! You saved my life. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. Open this door. There is no turning back. You still want to enter? I do. It's better than staying here. Very well. Off you go. world because they should not exist, even if it means losing someone that you love. Mr. Morgan, do you want a refill? Yes, thank you. Is the coffee that good, Mr. Morgan? Coffee is a vital investigative tool. I know exactly what to do now. says to hurry, and the first letter of each line is H-A-R-R-Y. Hurry to Harry. Looks like the time that he was talking about has come. Let's go pay the problematic rich boy who owns half of the town a visit. P Polly, I think I'm going to go see Harry today. 
Oh, really? He's a little strange, but I think he's the most trustworthy one around here. I think you'll have fun with him. If you say so, Polly, then we probably will. Of course! Now, give me your cup, and I'll give you some more coffee. I'll see you later, Polly. Mr. Morgan! What about the coffee? Don't you want a refill? Your coffee! What's wrong, Polly? You look a little tired. I'm fine. Well, it's just that I was cleaning up my room, and so many memories came flooding back to me. Memories? Oh, my dear! Mr. Morgan, that's not the kind of question you should ask a lady. Hey, am I still a suspect? No. Okay, well, good. My wife and I have been living separately for over three years now. Diane, she's a single woman, so this shouldn't be a problem. That's true. I feel so bad for Diane, though. Gosh, D did you find out who did it? I can't discuss that. Yes, of course, I, I understand. You don't have to tell any of the folks around town about me and Diane, do you? No, I won't do that. But it's a small town. I'm sure the rumors have started already. Nothing to be ashamed of, right? What's there to worry about? Nothing in particular. No, nothing at all. I'm clean. As clean as the sheets in this hotel. What's with that look? We don't have a problem, right? It looks like Kaysen is involved with another woman in town. We can only hope it isn't Emily. Now that's a pretty girl. I wonder who she is. Polly's daughter, perhaps? Maybe a granddaughter. Might be worth asking her. You? 
Hi. Polly, about this picture. Oh, that's me when I was young. Well, that's that. What about it, Mr. Morgan? Oh, nothing. Forget it. Oh, it brings back memories. There was a Miss Greenvale contest in town, and I was so young and daring. I entered the contest, you see. It's embarrassing just thinking about it now. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You look beautiful in this picture. Yes, yes. And the food was just wonderfully delicious. So, Polly, where's the trophy? Oh, Mr. Morgan, I never said that I became Miss Greenvale. There were no trophies for second place. You mean this pretty girl in this picture was second place? So who won first place? Are you serious, Mr. Morgan? It couldn't be more obvious. It was Sigourney. Sigourney? The lady with the pot? Now she was beautiful. All the men in town were crazy about her. Well, of course, aside from my husband, that is. <coughs> uh. Oh, you should quit smoking, Mr. Morgan. That's right, Polly. Well, thanks for bringing back such a wonderful memory. I can't give you this picture, but please take this instead. Now that's one story I won't be forgetting for a while. York, I can't find Thomas. Was he here? No, I haven't seen him. Have you tried the radio? I've been trying, but he's not answering. <sighs> what about Nick? No problem with him. He's calmed down a little. He's still saying he didn't do it. Nick said that Thomas disappeared sometime during the night. He kept calling for him, but Thomas stopped responding. I I'm a bit worried. George has asked for permission to search for Thomas. I understand that things have been hard for Thomas, but surely he's just resting at home. Uh, but I'm not against looking for him. Tell George that he has my blessing. Okay. As far as I know, Thomas always calls in when he needs a day off. We're human, and so we are limited. As far as you know, there haven't been any serial killings here before, right? That's right, but that's not... Emily, I'm going to see Harry today. What? Why? We have plenty of other leads to follow, don't we? He did invite me over, though. It would be bad manners not to accept. Are you really an FBI agent? I think the FBI would take a more logical approach to investigations. Uh, but Emily, serial killer does not stay within the boundaries of logic. Thus, you can't hope to capture such a killer using only logic. That's why I'm going to see Harry. You go with George and find Thomas. Okay, sounds like a plan. Great, thanks. Ugh, I was an idiot for thinking you might be a good pick. I really need to work on my taste in men.
we've ended up with a third victim. That dive I made at the gallery ended up being a wasted attempt to save a life. It's a real mess. Dive. When's the last time I made a dive like that? Oh, I remember. Do you? It was in my late teens. We used to go to those concerts. You and I like punk rock, but we like different types of punk. You liked hard and heavy punk. Like Crash and Sham 69. I like the more twisted ones. Like the damned Buzzcocks, Iggy Pop, and Joy Division. We used to talk for hours about the bands we really liked. But for some reason, neither of us listened to the Sex Pistols. I wonder why that was. It seems strange thinking about it now. I've been waiting for you, Benjamin. I've got a good one for you today. Don't go around spreading this one. I'll tell you another one when I see you again. <laughs> Zack, did you want to go somewhere before I visit Harry? That's fine by me. surfing bird, and I was so depressed when I heard the news of the deaths. Original punk. Hmm? Zack, we'll finish our chat.
I thought about ordering in, but since we had leftovers, I made us lunch. Oof. What's with the face? I think my cooking turned out pretty good today. Oh, okay, great. A sudden crisis. What should I do, Zach? I might not be a wonder chef like Thomas, but I do practice every day. Well, <sighs> come on, tell it to me straight. Emily. Yes, what? I went into the sewer once during an investigation. Okay, just stop right there. Zach, we're here. Let's continue our chat later. Mr. Francis York Morgan, finally you have arrived. You are welcome to come inside.
Mr. Francis York Morgan, Mr. Stewart has been waiting for you. To the meeting room you shall go to. The meeting room is through here. Please be kind. Be sincere. Mr. Francis York Morgan, please have some tea while it is hot. Too much coffee for your body will make it rot. You seem well prepared. Almost as though you knew I would be coming today. Mr. Stewart is particular about the best timing for all things. Now please, 
Drink some tea and enjoy the good health it brings. I'm sorry, Harry, but I just don't like tea. Mr. Francis York Morgan, some tea with sugar is what's best admired. By your body that looks so tired, so says Mr. Stewart. Harry, where did you get these seeds? Mr. Francis York Morgan, those seeds were found in our town, in a certain specific place. More seeds are there you will see when you find that certain space. Come back to me and we shall talk after you find that certain place. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, so you like to play games? Mr. Francis York Morgan, a hint for you to find this location. It is most crowded and most quiet, and gives a cold sensation. So says Mr. Stewart. All right. So you're not going to talk unless I find this certain place. I'll play along. Zack, let the treasure hunt begin. A crowded place, and yet it is very quiet there. Have you figured it out, Zack? It must be the graveyard. There's lots of people there, but none of them can speak. You see? So let's get going to the graveyard. Lines. We went all the way to New York. 
hard to see them play, right, Zach? It took us hours to get to New York by bus. We got to the CBGB and we were so nervous we couldn't go inside. It took us 30 minutes to gather enough courage to go inside. And inside, we were shocked. Right, Zach? Oh, Zach, we're here. Let's continue our chat later. Just as Harry said, it's crowded and quiet. Hey, Brian. Agent. Mr. Agent, how are you? Oh, uh, not bad. I'm, uh, just playing a little game with Harry. Game? A game? Oh, huh. is that fun? We've only just started, Brian. The fun is about to begin. I'd like to ask you something, actually. Is there a tree in the graveyard that drops red seeds? Seeds? Red seeds? That? That tree does. And that one. And that one, too. All red seeds. Zach, mission accomplished. Let's get back to Harry's. The reward better be good. But you know, about these seeds, they were right here under my nose. It's as if I was carefully carrying a bottle of water while walking in a pool. We're learning the countryside version of common sense the hard way, Zach.
Mr. Francis York Morgan, finally you have arrived. You are welcome to come inside. Mr. Francis York Morgan, please proceed to Mr. Stewart's room. There he awaits you, I shall assume.
Harry, turns out what you said was true, and I'd like to hear more. York, as you know, there's a powerful mystery surrounding these seeds. You've seen them at those other murders that took place elsewhere. And you've seen them deeply involved with the murders in this town as well. <laughs> That's right. But how do you know all this? York, you must be younger than you look. Youngsters tend to hurry so much that they let things slip right past them. What you need to do is slow this down a bit. That way you'll see what's really important. Let me tell you a story. Fifty years ago, when the war was over, just about when the communist red started to become a rising threat, our town constructed a huge clock tower. Then, soon afterwards, a serial killer wearing a red raincoat went on a killing spree. The legend of the raincoat killer? Stop playing games with me, Harry. That's nothing more than folklore. The FBI has no such record of a multiple homicide case in this town. records about it, then how do you know it really happened? Good question, York. Why would I know this? The answer is very simple. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. The brutal killer himself. But we can talk about the details of that encounter another time. To talk about is your raincoat killer, the new raincoat killer, if you will. The new raincoat killer. Yes, let's call him that. After all, he's not the real one. What you want to know more about is the new one. Between ten and twelve. Ago, I noticed that these red seeds were special, and someone else did too. The human imagination can lead to tragedy sometimes. Someone linked the red seeds to the serial killer legend and said, If you eat the red seeds and then kill someone, you will become this new fabricated legend was passed on from one to the next, evolving and changing every time, like a rumor. Some may have actually taken the seeds to try them out, to prove the legend that is. York, the red seeds you have found from those other murders, they all came from this town. seeds might be growing in different parts of the world. 
So you're saying that the series of cases I've been following are all linked to this town. That's interesting, Harry. But there's no evidence to support that story. None of the criminals we caught for the other murders ever mentioned anything like that. It's your job. Your role and duty to look into that. Work. Now, the game must go on. You know I said that the incident 50 years ago was totally erased. Well, not quite. Records still exist in the sheriff's office. The old sheriff back then hated the military and did his own investigation. I need you to bring those documents here, to me. Once you've done that, I'll tell you everything I know. <laughs> okay, it's worth a look. And we may as well let the old man have his fun. Documents from a case that happened 50 years ago. Let's play along with the old man for a little longer, shall we? Zack, that means we need to head for the sheriff's department. York, I told you, that's nothing more than local folklore. Harry said that he was there. The raincoat killer is a phantom, made up to scare children long ago. I can't believe you fell for that from Harry, of all people. I agree with George. Harry likes to play with people, play with their minds, too. George, Emily. Of course I don't believe him word for word. But you won't mind if I at least try to confirm that he's wrong, will you? <laughs> well then, can you look for the files by yourself? I'm still looking for Thomas. Very well. Emily, open the filing room for him. Too, Zach. This might mean we're getting warmer to what we need.
Too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle.
Zack, looks like we need to continue our search for the documents. George, I'll get right to the point. It looks like someone else has just removed the documents I'm looking for. Huh? Removed? The cabinet looks like it had been forced open. That's impossible. No one could break into there. No. Emily, there is one person that can access that room at any time. You don't mean Thomas? It's too early to speculate. And profiling is my job, remember? More importantly, Emily, could you get me a coffee? A fresh one, if possible. Coffee? At a time like this? <laughs> Why now? Emily, please. This is very important. Some coffee. And bring some milk on the side. Zack, you know something, don't you? I'm getting us some coffee. So tell me what you know. Ugh. Zach, this is amazing. Even the taste of her coffee is thrilling, to say the least. What? No, nothing. This isn't the cup that Thomas always uses for me, is it? I'm sorry about that too, then. I just used a cup that was nearby. You have a problem with that? A problem? Not at all, my dear Emily. The coffee is perfect. Well, okay, taste aside, this cup certainly is perfect. George, Emily, we're going to Velvet Falls. There's something waiting for us there. I can feel it. York, are you joking? You're trusting your cup? No, Emily, going to a waterfall just might be a good idea. In feng shui, a waterfall is known to be a source of power. Even if we find nothing there, I'm sure it will give us some power. Thanks for the vote of confidence, George. And don't forget to bring a fishing rod. All right, I'll go get it. Fishing? <laughs> Are you too serious? George, do you have a net? Zack, I hope we can catch a big one.
fish. This isn't the time to be fishing for fish, Zach. This doesn't look like the documents we need. Try again. Fishing sack. We've caught something to brag about now. In all the history of the FBI, I'm probably the only one who fished out documents thrown into a waterfall. Don't you think so, Zach? I just don't believe it. Files from a waterfall. What does that all mean? It's called The Legend of the New Raincoat Killer. George, have you ever seen this handwriting? <gasps> yes. It's Thomas's. George, I need to take these documents to Harry. He said he'd tell me everything once I take the docs to him. Those are classified. I can't allow a civilian to view them. Especially that deranged old goat who owns most of the town. I agree with George. Harry is... How can I put it? He might be dangerous. You don't need to worry. You said it yourselves, didn't you? There has never been a mass murder case in this town. That means these documents pertain to a case that never actually happened. Just look at it as though they never actually existed, either. Ridiculous. York, I'm sure you've got a plan or something in mind. Okay. You have my approval. George, are you sure? Emily, we need to continue looking for Thomas. Our search may just have become a hunt. Yes, get on it. I'll go see Harry alone. Okay.
I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it for myself. But Thomas? There's got to be a rational explanation for this. Zach George is starting to change. I think the deaths of Becky and Diane had a deep effect on him. I guess this town truly is without a king now. Okay then, Zack. Let's pay Harry another visit and get to the bottom of all this. I have to admit, I do like spending a bit of time investigating alone. I'm getting a bit sick of being told that I'm either too slow or too fast. You agree with me, right, Zack? Mr. Francis York Morgan, finally you have arrived. You are welcome to come inside. Looks like the next game is hide and seek. Huh? These girls, Zack. Do you see the resemblance? Anna, Becky, she looks like Diane, and Carol. Zack, look. Emily.
Emily! At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. Stop!
Zack. Looks like we're out of the countryside and back in civilization. documents. Just what is going on in here? I warned you about haste. Take it slow. You'll lose sight of what's important if you just rush past it. As an agent of the FBI, I'm sure you know. So many people have got it all wrong. They think speed is the key. That being first is the best. They want speed, and are satisfied with what the speed brings, even if it means that they miss so much on the way, they don't even see that. I see everything that they don't. From here, I see it all. Then, when the time comes, I make use of what I've seen. I can get whatever I want in this way. Anything at all. You're certainly talkative today, Harry. But I didn't come here for a business lecture. Tell me everything you know. Speed is not important. Timing is what is important. Timing. York, you have a natural gift for waiting for the correct timing. Just be careful that your haste does not ruin everything. That will be vital to solving the current case at hand. York, I know more than you think, but less than what you hope. One, you have Nick in custody. Two, Thomas is missing. Three, Carol has a locket that belongs to the murderer. I also know that this case revolves around the Red Seeds, <laughs> but that's about it. So you've got an inside line on police information. That reminds me, the victims' tongues were cut out, weren't they? But that's only a minor point. Don't let the shocks blind you to what's more important. That's another business tip. I'm impressed. You gather information really well. You hacked into the FBI network, too. Amazing. But I didn't come here to hear this. Then let us close the business seminar. It's time for a history lesson instead. was 
following morning, I awoke, surrounded by dead bodies. It wasn't raining anymore, and the purple fog was gone. I couldn't believe what I saw, and what I myself had done. But even worse things were waiting for me when I got home. My mother was dead. Killed, presumably, also by my father. Next day, the town was overrun by military personnel. That's when the gag order was issued. Talking about the incident was unappreciated, a taboo. But even still, people stopped going outside when it rained. Country folk are very patriotic. We never tell our children about what happened. But these things find a way out of even the tightest of lips, in parts. People only speak of the killer in the red raincoat, which is where the legend of the raincoat killer comes from. Quite a story. After the incident, the gas seeped into the soil of the town. Even today, when it rains, a minute amount is released. That's why I never take my mask off when I'm outside. This town is dirty, York. If what you say is true, then the killer is someone who is badly affected when it rains. You need to draw the conclusions, not I. I have no conclusions. Is there a connection between the red seeds and the gas, then? This is just my own presumption. The seeds and the gas have a similar effect on our nervous systems. I believe someone figured that out and decided to use it. Or it could just be nature's way of getting back at us humans.
tell you one last and very important thing. Just as you suspected, everything I have told you is gibberish. I never hacked into the FBI server, and I certainly know nothing about the Red Seeds. I shall thank you for listening to an old man babble. Let me ask you one thing then, Harry. You're a businessman. You must be after something in return for giving me this information. York, at times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. But that still does not justify murder. Remember this. Everything changes in four. There isn't a single thing that can maintain its shape for eternity. Overlook this fact. You'll be making a big, big mistake.
George, what's happened? We received an anonymous call informing us that Thomas returned home. I sent Emily to get you right away. No idea who made the call? No. That's why I came on ahead, to see if the information was correct. A light did come on, but only for a second. I saw a tall male silhouette in the window. It was Thomas. Okay. I'm going in then. You two wait here. We'll be ready to burst in at any moment. Just call out. Zack, it's the same in the countryside after all. The climax of an investigation is always in an apartment. Too much noise. <laughs>